Hey guys, welcome back to Survival Records. So here I am, stuck behind the shadow of this moon, and my resources are way over there. So I, I'm gonna see what I can do to fix that. My refinery is churning away at that uranium. Uh, and I think, okay, so I'm at 55 and 48 kilometers out there, and they are, you know, there and there. So here's this. Let's see what is 62. Mm, it's probably a little, a little far. 43 kilometers. All right, let's check what we can find to the, uh, the third point on that triangle. Oh, and I'm uh, specifically thinking I might be able to get above the moon. Though... Looks like I still missed it. Oh, and I'm in range of the drone facility now. Erg. Well, I don't know. Uh... I mean, I guess you could say space is dark. Though, looking right over that way, I see some lit up asteroids. So let's check what we can find. Oh, and look at that. So it's reading off of the ore detector tier two, and not the Espelta ore detector. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that one, turn off that one. Ah, and look, I got a, got a read right off the bat. Okay. So this one, I see three spikes on ice. Two spikes on stone, but there's also something else in there. Iron, I think? I think that, that that's probably it. Fortunately, I don't need much iron right now, so let's move on. I'm going to try and find a decent source of magnesium, and at that point, I will have a little bit of everything. Oh, and a reaver is coming in. So, yeah. Uh, let's... Let's try and avoid that. What do we... What do we got here? That's a... bit of ice and stone, but also maybe... Mm. I don't know. The magnesium spike is all the way on the far end. Three sharp bits little, uh, yeah, it's not detecting that one, it's too far. Hmm, don't necessarily want to run, jump towards the reaver. Can I see what a piercer looks like? Oh, that thing's big. Ooh, yeah, I'm not liking that. Well, I'm gonna keep an eye out for any resource. You know, I, I, I'll be able to jump on a moment's notice. Press the button, right? Ooh, that one looks like it is exclusively ice. Maybe that's an ice droid. 
All right, guys, I'll bring you back when I found something to jump to. So as this one is coming into view, the sun is rising on it. That reaver is uh, continuing to leave, which is nice. And it looks to me like that one's got some magnesium in it. A lot of stone as well, but... Ah, uh, worth checking out at least. The, uh, that reaver was pretty big. Large grid, clearly. Unpleasant. So, where was I? Oh, come on, don't make me have to find it. Oh, right there. There we go. All right. Oh, and I'm going to be jumping towards the reaver. Uh, let's give this a shot, see what happens. Usually jumping doesn't, like, attract their attention, per se. Okay, they're three kilometers away. Uh, I didn't get any warning that they're going to come after me. Now this jump should pull us a distance away from further again. Yeah, 6k out. And I'd be willing to bet that that asteroid is now... Yeah, inside range. Okay. We're 3.7 kilometers out. Interesting. Oh, and looks like the Reaver is out of range, so... Unless I get a uh, sudden alert... I think I just have three kilometers to go. All right, see you guys there. Well, I'm not seeing any surface ore, but uh, let's hop in the number two. Ooh, wait a minute. I, I had a decent recommendation. Let's, uh, let's grab this color and give it a little more saturation, a little uh, darker value, and get some stripes going on this. Make sure the pencil looks right. Alright, I think that's uh, probably pretty good. Oh, it looks like I got a little bit of a bend on the bottom. Probably from where I've been banging into things. Okay, just, just enough. You know, there's this um, old uh, technique for when you're designing a spaceship. Because, you know, who knows what necessities will be uh, in place in the future when space travel is real. And so, sci-fi spaceships are always a little bit uh, up for grabs. So, a recommendation that I had gotten one time from somebody who did it on a, you know, reliable somewhat professional basis was you just grab your, grab any old random object near you like, uh, you know, a bottle opener or a, a can of shampoo uh, and use that as inspiration for the shape for your ship. And so kind of went the other direction with me uh, where I made the shape and then got inspired to have a uh, an object. But um, the, the part of it that was not, uh, not easy to explain was that you take, you take a look at where the 
Oh yeah, I definitely got some ores on this. Ooh, gold and magnesium. All right, cool. You take that shape and you make it your basic shape, and then you add bits to it to make it uh, to make it look cool, make it give it purpose. So um, while I am a fan of this just being a pencil, I might give it some some f bits and bobs. Greebling is actually what it would be called in the in the profession, where you take your you know basic shape and you just add little bits. So I might I might do some greebling on this. Greebling is not just the adding of exterior. Uh, giving something a shape is not necessarily greebling. It's when you take the uh, take the shape and add just some. Contour. Whoa. That came out of really fast. Okay, let's get some ores. Uh, I'll grab some gold too while I'm at it, because, you know, I need gold. I really, I wish I could grab some extra silver, I wish I could make some extra reactor components. That is what I need to do next. You know, this, uh, Magnesium is way more voluminous, vol volum vol volumetric, voluptuous. I, I, I doubt that that's the right word. You get more of it from smaller area than you do of the other ores, like the uh, like the uranium. Oh, and that's a second deposit in another spot. That's good to see. Oof. <laughs> Not quite as nimble when I'm loaded to bear. Uh, let me offload this and then grab some of that gold. Well, I am a little concerned that I'm not going to have room in this container for any of that gold I was looking for. That is a lot more magnesium than I expected. Uh, but am I starting to work on these? I am. Oh, and I'm still missing some gold. Yeah, look at that. It's starting to, starting to come through. Okay, uh, let me worry about what's... That's going further away. All right. Okay, yeah, we're good, we're good. Um, I will say that I saw there was a tube, a pipe, a hollow in this asteroid... And, you know, I've been looking for a place to set up a shop. And so, maybe I can consider that here. It was on the far side. Let's fly around. One thing I do like about... Oh, here it is. A, uh, an asteroid base is being able to put some... Ah, yep. Yeah. All at empty space. Uh, put some uh, solar panels onto it. Uh, and that would be hard to do here because this moon... And we're basically right at the equator of that moon. That sun is moving in that direction. So, I don't know. I will have to consider it a little bit more, I think. Maybe if I... So, there's the planet. There's the moon. There's another moon there, and another moon there? Or no, those are distant planets. Ideally, you can get like up above the plane of the, of the disk of where the planets and the moons are rotating. And then you can build your your base there, and you'll always have sunlight. I don't know if that's 
necessarily uh, viable always. But I suppose with the spectrometry, spe spectrometry, it's a spectrum and a metry because you are measuring a spectrum. Spectrometry, metry, spe yeah. spectrometry. With the spectrometry mod, uh, being able to find uh, good things easily enough, I, I can I could probably just manage a uh, manage to just go to a new area, check out a make a space base out in space, you know, jump a few thousand kilometers away from here. Let's uh, let's consider that as a project for the future. In, in the immediate term, I might consider putting in another large cargo containers, uh, just to to spread out the load. I am starting to uh, worry about it, I, and I might. Might get rid of this refinery. I mean, it is doing work, but it's not doing work nearly as well as these are. This one. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, the mod author, I think, uh, contacted me about the tiered systems and told me that all the information was to be found on the website. Let's uh, take a look at that quick. I was mistaken. Well, I wasn't mistaken. The, the mod author, Captain Cosmet, did comment on one of my videos. Thanks for uh, noticing me, I guess. And thank you for the mod. It's really, uh, really interesting so far. I, li I like the idea of it, for sure. He suggested that the descriptions of the block has more info on it. So, like, hmm, where would you find the description of the block? Is it... Refinery. This description here? Okay, well, I looked at those earlier. And I guess it's... Seven point seven kiliters inventory out, inventory in, mass. I imagine that if I turn off conveyor system, there we go. It is now affecting the, uh, the ratios a little bit, like so, or I don't know. Let's check something else. Welders. A welder. It doesn't have a lot of information there. The only difference here is that it takes more power. Instead of one kilowatt with a max of two kilowatts, it's two kilowatts with a max of two kilowatts. The other thing he was suggesting is that there's build vision. So... No, I don't know what I would be seeing here. That makes much difference. Oh, I suppose it has more integrity. Uh, that's good. Meaning they're harder to destroy. Hmm... Oh, that's on. I don't want to get hurt by it. Well, maybe I'll find something else and, uh, 
uh, I'll poke around their Discord and I'll I'll check more on the mod description in Steam, just to uh, check if there's anything else I can find. And in the meantime, gotta decide where I want to put another large cargo container. I might put them right here, attached to the front of this. There's room for it right there, I guess. And it wouldn't be that... Mm, I don't know, maybe not. We'll see. There's the other idea, uh, that the hangar bay here, holding on to the, uh, the full jacks, is a little useless at this point. And maybe I ought to repurpose this whole space as a... Uh, like an honest cargo container. I think I might do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I don't really need the, uh, the jacks. Um, and, you know, considering I didn't even design it myself, I just kind of adopted it. I don't really have much emotional attachment to it. So maybe it's time has come and I will scrap it. Or maybe I'll redesign it to be a smaller ship, something that I can use just as a uh, a quick little like shuttle for doing work around the the sled here. That probably is a better idea. Yeah. Yeah, let me do that. Alright. I will, uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's get it. Let's get it shifted about some. And then redesign this area to be a proper cargo hold. Yeah. And since I'm here, uh, processing stuff, let's grab a bit of gold as well to have it in the way. Uh, processing while I, while I work. So, let's do that first. Alright, so a large cargo container, 3x3. Three three. I'm seeing a space right in here that's already one deep and would fit up into top here back this way and a lot of these conveyors just seem extra let me start cutting away at that and let me uh, get that 3x3 three three car container in through here yeah Right in this area. Gonna have to reassemble the buttons on the door, though. Arg! I did find a block that it does, in fact, occupy that space. That I don't want to move. The gravity generator. I was hoping to keep the idea of it having flipping me upside down, but uh, I guess realistically, I probably don't need two gravity generators on one ship. So, uh, yeah, he'll have to go. Inventory full. And that is nicely emptied out. None of these conveyor blocks actually went to anything any longer. I imagine that they definitely did go places uh, back when this was first designed, but, well, that's what it is now. Uh, let's take a look at my options here and I like this color for color um, everything here is going to need interior plates so let's grab some of that and well there we go I've got an option for the 
Large industrial cargo container. I like, yeah, you know, it's a cool model. The alternative is obviously the regular large cargo container. Uh, in this iteration, it, you know, doesn't really matter. There's an opening on every side. But let's give the industrial one a go. Don't think I'm going to need. There we go. I'm not going to need that flat surface. There's not going to be anything uh, there. The the walls going out towards where the um, jump drives are. They don't need any any contain. Oh, actually. Maybe I actually should put, yeah, okay, so, uh, lots of thoughts going through my head. Let me describe what I'm thinking of here, and let me, let's get out where I can show, show you all. Uh, so, if I have it in there like this, in order to point a welder at the jump drives, I would need to you know, fix it on from the sides. And maybe I ought to do that anyway. So I put a welder down in this space here. Like this. Well, with a welder, of course. So put a welder in right there, and that actually welds up and keeps the uh, tank and the jump drive some structural integrity while it's just sitting there. And I'll put the same thing on the far side, just to kind of future-proof what's going on here with the damage that these things might take if I ever get attacked. Uh, and that's sitting in that spot there and there, which then lets me put the cargo container with its ports up down, forward, and back. I think I like that. Alternatively, I do it like this. And have the ports be on the sides next to things. Hmm... I think I like visually that better. Yeah. Alright. And I'll just have to... Well, I mean, I don't have to do anything, but I do have the option of putting in a welder now. Right here. Maybe pointing out this direction and getting multiple tanks. Maybe I get a higher tier welder that has a larger sphere and I can get, you know, this whole wall of tanks back here on this side and the refiner, uh, the jump drive. Alright, well, cool. I got options. Let's get this piped in, which means I have to switch this one out. And then let's get it welded up. Well, the ship welders take a long time. Like... You are seeing how slowly that was going. This hand welder is, like, twice as fast. That's interesting. But anyway, I now have a second container. And inventory management is probably already selected it as another ore container. Oh, that's going to irritate the heck out of me. I could have rotated it 180 degrees and it would have been... Ugh. Look, Inventory what I'm filled. doing, I'm being anal. There we go. That That's... Uh, that's better. So... 
I just realized that these tanks were being held on by exclusively that conveyor. So, uh, yeah, I threw some blocks in on that side, and let's do some more over here. Looks like we're turning into a bit of a construction day for the sledge here. It's called the sledge in its file name, uh, grid name, right? Space sledge, but I keep calling it the sled. I don't know. A sledge is just a big sled, as far as I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Look, it even says sled right there. Ah, that's a distraction. Anyway, let's, uh... Let's do some more work. Yeah. Aha! I found the, the... the description that contains the differences. It's on the left of the screen, underneath where it says airtight, one of ten faces, terminal, physical terminal, conveyor port, three say power required for a regular one, two kilowatts. For the modded one, two kilowatts. Priority, one out of eleven. Uh, I'm not sure what the differences are there. So, looks to me like the really only difference here is that the welding radius is, uh, is different. Now, obviously, for the small grid version, there's a lot more that's different. But, clearly there, we're seeing that the welding radius is different. Hmm. But it doesn't necessarily imply that the welding speed is better or not. So maybe that is something that I'm going to gonna have to figure out still. Ah, anyway. Now that I have an additional container, uh, still hasn't been given any special... Let's call it O Army. Or and any ore that I collect will hopefully get split into that container as well. No, oh, it's actually ores. Let's let's do that. Ores. There we go. The large industrial cargo cont container is accommodating some of the ores. Oh, and let's get rid of that small cargo container 9. Inventory. Control panel. Ores. Uh, this one here. Nope, that's not what I meant to press there. I, I'm sure it'll figure itself out. Alright. What next? Uh, let's deal with the jacks here. The full jacks. Uh, let's... I'm going to start by taking off these drills, these grinders. Uh, they're not grinders, they're drills. Yeah. I'll bring you back when I've got an update. Alright, well, after much uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth, you might say, um, 
No, really what happened was I had to unlock a bunch of new blocks again, so it took me a while to get through that. Because what I wanted to do was move that reactor to there, because I'm going to slice this off right here. Uh, turn it into a small little snub type thing. Might need a little more boost in the forward direction. Turn those blocks back on, might help. But, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be it, and then I'll have the one connector on the bottom. Yeah, that should do. It's just a matter of getting all this all there. Inventory full. Okay, we've got a hostile near engaging firefly coming in, and there's a reaver over there, so I'm just gonna do a quick pop and away. Hopefully that was enough. Nope, the firefly is coming still. Grr, I hate those things. Maybe I can go meet it uh, with my hand grinder. Yeah. Alternatively, I guess I can just make sure I'm oriented such that all of my guns on the rear of the ship can face it properly. Yeah. Yes. Like, the only reason I don't want to do anything, I, I didn't put a GPS down there. Uh... Oh, what's the matter? I'm gonna find more asteroids out there eventually. I got tons of, uh... Magnesium from this one. So, yeah, let's just keep going. Okay, here goes nothing. That piercer showed back up, but... It's not coming straight at me, so I don't think it's coming at me. And let's do this. Oh, that's what. That was a lot of... Okay. Inertial dampener is on. Let's lock. There's a lot of oomph. A lot more than I intended for it to be. I guess it is a rather small ship with a rather large amount of thrust. So, uh, anyway, um, I think you could probably manage all of its thrust going on right now. Ah, but either way, this is now an intact grid. Uh, Ooh, do I want to go ahead and fill this in? Yeah. Alright. Well, guys, I know that last time I had quite the long episode. 
I think this time I'm going to try and oh, do better. Um, maybe cut myself back in terms of how many minutes I'm putting in here. Uh, buttons. Try buttons. I mean, realistically, there's only going to be one button that does one thing. It opens and closes this door. Okay. Ooh, yeah, let's go with the sci-fi control button. That one. Because that's a big old button you can come in and press easily enough. Alright. And... Oh, it's not a button, it's a control panel. Dang it. Where was I? Alright. Control panel, control panel. One button terminal. Let's try this. groups and that's what I figured there was already a group made for the hangar just need to grab my fedora from on the other side of that so okay that is done Now we're oriented the right direction, and this is where the walkway is going to be, with stairs going up. Yeah, alright. Well guys, hope you enjoyed tagging along while I got a little more progress made. I'm happy to see that this... Sh the game is running well for me and not crashing anymore. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see y'all next time. And thanks for watching.